presents The Raw Files Well hello everybody, uh, welcome to Ashford Daily's Raw Files We're still coming from uh, Corfu Island, from the Grand Workshop and it gives us great pleasure to introduce the legend, which is Mr. Oh. David Baxter. Absolutely. Finally. I don't feel like a legend. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, uh, I just enjoy life. You know, I enjoy, yeah, so. It's absolutely fabulous to talk to you. Um, for photographers that are coming new into the business, can yes. you just tell us a little bit about who David Baxter is? Yeah, I mean, I, um, I started in 1996 um, in Arizona in the United States. And... Um, uh, I did every type of every type of photography known to mankind, and uh, at one point I learned that to specialize into one direction of photography is actually a strong concept to brand, and so I, I realized that actually weddings was it, it I, I somehow or another I can't tell you how I did it, but I was I felt the most freedom in weddings, but I had grabbed the freedom and I had educated my brides and grooms about the freedom of allowing me to shoot the way I wanted to shoot which was different than commercial or any other jobs that I had done. Um, for some reason I had said, this is what I want to do and I, and I hope you, li you like it, which was a weird way of doing it um, because most of the time it's all about the client, what they want and all that, especially back in 1996. And um, so anyway, I, I specialized in weddings and then six months later, that was around the year 2000, uh, 2000 1999, somewhere around there. And then the year, um, uh, then I went, about six months after that, I said, you know what, I love to travel. So I want my travel and I want my uh, business and my photography to all be one you know, lifestyle. So I said, I'm gonna be a destination wedding photographer. So I, that's what I did, I, I stripped everything from my website and I had three weddings. No lie, my first destination wedding was the Cotswolds in UK. Oh wow. The Cotswolds. <laughs> it was the very first right. wedding, that was yeah. the very first destination wedding. That was 1998. And then I had one in Milan, Italy, which was, uh, I had thrown some advertising out and it was almost pure luck. And then I had one in Hawaii. And after those three weddings started, I was the core and nothing else of a destination wedding website. And then I went, boom, I'm a destination wedding photographer. I'm, I've always been able to uh, have the ability to be able to take bigger leaps in my, in my business. So that was a big leap and a big, you know, leap of faith and a big risk. But I did... It did well because people were going, wow, you were a destination wedding photographer. Yeah. That's great because there's more now than there was then. So uh, it was more unique at the yeah. time, but it's still a great job. I love it. Yeah, and so. I think what's interesting is, is Mary doesn't know this because she wasn't known in the other lecture, but yes. um, you were actually a forest firefighter, weren't you, originally in the old days? Yeah, that's right. I was a forest firefighter for 12 years, mm -hmm. and I loved that job. It was so much fun. I traveled all around the United States in a crew very similar to... Um, it, if it was military, almost simil almost military, even though in uh, you know, and it was um, it was a great job. It was a summer job, so when the summer was over, um, I had the winter off, and I would travel around the world in the winter. I'd take a buck, uh, backpack on my back, mm -hmm. and I think the UK calls it uh, rucksack, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, right? <laughs> and uh, and I I'd, ta I'd take a rucksack around the world, and I would travel to India and Asia and all over the world, and and, and travel, come back, and and do. Uh, um, I would, I would alternate. It was really funny. I would take, I'd go around the world um, one year, and then at, in that winter, and then, and then I'd fight fire again. And then the next winter, I would actually uh, travel in the United States. Mm -hmm. And then the next year after that, I'd go back around the world again. So that's so. it. But we have a real passion for travel <laughs> yes. as well. Yeah. And uh, destination mm -hmm. weddings is a is a real it's a step for us that we wish to to make yes. how when you said that you, you had your three yeah. weddings how did you actually initially start uh targeting and marketing how did you get that lucky break um well it like you said it was lucky to get the uk wedding in the beginning because it was just they, they lived in a small town next to, my, to next to us but they're originally from the uk mm -hmm. so they decided to go back to the uk to get married and I, so I just happened to be someone they knew, and they really wanted to come and have me come. They paid me, but, but uh, I went to the UK. So that was luck. And then uh, it was luck that somebody was there at the UK wedding that was getting married in Hawaii. So the, and these are, the, these are things. But, but actually what 
did it though really was my ability to say, all right, I'm stripping everything from my website, calling myself a destination wedding photographer and taking these big leaps of faith that I'm going to uh, specialize in one direction and say, this is where I'm going. Uh, everything else can, can go away. I'm not, I, I didn't even do portraits. I didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. So I basically thought, um, how am I going to get people to hire me and take me around the world? There was two things. One would be um, me saying, I'm going there, um, you know, and, and uh, like doing things like as simple as this. Not simple, but I had a friend in Slovenia and I said, uh, you know, I would love to come to Slovenia and just visit you. So can we get some model shoots together? And, and we'll get some dresses together and we'll have fun. We'll shoot together because he's a photographer also. So he said, yeah, let's do that. So I went to Slovenia and we shot in Italy and Slovenia and all over and Austria and, uh, and brought those images back. Put, load them on your website and you know it, just fantastic so very forward I, I'm always pushing forward and I'm proactive to get what I want out of this business so uh, I don't just let things just kind of come to me I'm always pushing forward so I put internet advertising over here and try that I wanted to go to Hawaii more often so I put internet advertising in Hawaii I wanted to go uh, different places around the world so I found where I could find and, and, I, and I lost a lot of money you know, trying trying things to see how it would work. So I failed plenty. Yeah. You know, so uh, um, it, it's. I think you have to try if you want to specialize. Um, you have to um, have a website that's designed around what you want to do, and then and then find ways to get people to see it. Yeah. You know. So how do you um, perceive the value of workshops to the professional photographer? Not necessarily yeah. the amateur photographer oh, yeah, these yeah. days, but sure, sure. the professional photographer in terms of their continuous learning. Yeah, I, I think that uh, I think workshops are amazing um, because they, and I really think workshops are great when they are, they're very specialized workshops. So if you you so once you do a workshop, maybe that's more fine tuned to composition, and then maybe a workshops that's fine tuned to business. And then one, maybe one office management. So think about uh, workshops that are actually outside your own field. That think that you. So the workshops, the best workshops, are the ones that you, that you're deficient in. Mm -hmm. You, uh, I'm not very good at this. So then you need to take a workshop for it. Um, I wasn't very good at public speaking in the beginning, and I told my wife, uh, and I was actually um, in the UK teaching, and I told Cassandra on the phone from the UK, and I said. I'm not doing very good. I, you know, I need help. And she said, "Well, let me look on the internet." And we found a um, a public speaker that was also an actor, and that lived in Seattle, Washington. And I actually paid this person um, for two solid days to teach me individually um, to be a better public speaker. And uh, that was uh, by far the best thing I've ever done. Mm -hmm. So, in, in sometimes you go to workshops and you think you're going to learn this, but you sometimes you you to come away with something completely different so uh, your job is just then to find the type of workshops you think that will that will really benefit you so I think they're, they're fantastic and you should uh, do two a year whether or more depending on you know the, how many days and one day a couple of hours whatever you know yeah. you know but so cool but I think the only thing is is to be careful doing you know uh, four or five workshops a year that are in the same kind of Mm -hmm. Thing you know, I mean, it, um, you can do too many of them if they're if they're all similar in, in style. So you should try to pick on what you're not good at. Yeah. Danger you know, of them being repetitive. That's right, being okay. repetitive. Yeah. You, you might pick up the odd tip off somebody else while you're there. Basically, hang on, I heard this. Uh, right. Well, yeah, I kind of know this, but I really respect the photographer that's yeah. teaching, and I, I I appreciate that. But I would say you'd be better off. I think maybe people do that because it's comfortable, but I think it'd be better off to say, you know, I'm really not very good at taxes, so I yeah. need to yeah. take a tax, you know, accounting type of a workshop yeah. that would help me to understand taxes better, yeah. especially for my business, you know, you know, that kind of thing. So that's that's so you know, fine tune what you decide what you're going to take. So yeah, I think there's um, been a real melting pot of talent here uh, presenting all very different, all with very different styles and ways of teaching and absolutely amazing. A lot of people are completely in a war. Um, yeah. Who do you find inspiring today? You mean, uh, uh, well actually, um, the, the, my biggest inspiration at this time comes from cinematography, uh, from movies. Um, I often watch a movie 
um, differently. Uh, maybe I'll watch the movie once for the story, but then I'll watch it a second time for the composition. And I really love, uh, I, I've been more influenced by a horizontal frame of composition and how that panoramic, almost cinematography, cinematic style frame, how they fit people into it and how they fit things into it, how they, how they work the composition and the lighting and the lines and all these things. There's many great movies out there from even back in the 1930s and 20s that are so, you can learn from. They're just amazing movies. And so I have a big collection of home, at home, and I, I watch them over and over again to, to remind me, like the movie called Hero. It's, it was done in, it was, it was a Chinese uh, kung fu movie. Mm -hmm. But what's crazy about it mm -hmm. was that the center composition, the person is, is uh, center subject composition right in the middle, but they, then they would bring all these amazing lines and symmetry from the sides. And it really put the power of that person in, in, uh, for the person to go uh, utilize the lines from both sides come right to a, a center and it was very powerful and so I learned a lot about center composition from that movie and there's another one called Easy Virtue and, it, um, and I learned about, about you walk into a room and there's a reflection on the wall and they use the reflection to have so you can see a person and I was thinking just a small reflection and I thought yeah. wow you know and you would focus on the person and the reflection and so I learned a lot about reflections so I, I learned a lot of course um, in the beginning um, you know, around the year 2000, Joe Busink was a really big fan of him. I was a big fan of his. And uh, Gary Fong, I was a big fan of his. And um, um, there were so many people that were, uh, had bigger names in the industry that, of course, I, I really appreciated. I also appreciated a lot of painting, uh, like Maxwell Parrish and William Wegman and, and a lot of and, and photographers that did dogs and all these different kinds of photographers mm. that are outside my industry. So, um, you know... And, and, and paintings and sculptures. I studied everything. Yeah. So uh, I get my, I get my, uh, my fix for, uh, you know, every, all the time I'm going online trying to study something new. Yeah. You know, you know, yeah. and, and outside my field too. You know, yeah. So, yeah. I think it's really important, that's actually, because we, we take time out each year to mm -hmm. go and uh, look at some uh, exhibitions, art exhibitions, uh, whilst I might be touring at the time, and yeah. you always come away with something yes. quite interesting. Big time, big time. It, it was just interesting hearing you talk about um, the moving pictures, sort of brings me on to something a bit controversial in the UK, is with the advent of the video now, yeah. yes. into these high-end DSLRs, and right. then the, right. the idea of image capture. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, do you think that's a danger to the stills photographer where they can literally go, yeah, yeah. there's a bit that bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I actually don't think, uh, I have to come into this industry, everywhere I go I have to come into this industry with a positive attitude. So I have to think about what could happen in the future positively. So I don't think of anything as a danger, ever. I think, I don't think, you know, people say, oh, there's so many new photographers in here. I think of how the industry is, is it, the image quality is getting better. I think of all the, the, so I never think in a negative way. So video, um, I, I, I look further. I say, okay, how can I incorporate video in the future? And I, I believe that in reality, it's very possible that we could be moving towards mostly video. And, and if that's true, then how am I going to incorporate video? So think about something simple like, like this. This could be very true in the next 10 years, okay? Um, I, as a image capture person, <laughs> yeah. go to a wedding, uh, and I capture it in um, a very uh, great little uh, SLR video. Um, and, um, and while I'm capturing it, all the information goes up to the cloud, okay, while I'm capturing it. Yeah. While, it's being, while it goes up to the cloud, all right, it gets shot off to India mm -hmm. um, to do the basic edit. Mm -hmm. It gets shot off to another company um, in some other, I'm saying India, but it could be anywhere, mm -hmm. all right? Um, um, it could be in another company that does a, um, a very stylistic edit. The bride decided, I want the stylistic and I want the basic, right? Mm -hmm. and, they're, they're, and as you're doing this, it's going to their software, to their places, and getting done as, as we speak. By the time you get home, the, edit, the basic edit's already done, yeah. right? And, so, and then that's being shot off to a place where the bride can see it online already. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying, these are things, and then, and then the image capture, the part that's just a simple image, I go on there and take the images that I like um, from the video, and then upload those, and well, I think it's all done on the cloud, so I just pick this, 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 and then say, done. Those images get sent to my printing company, and they get printed for, and the bride, you know, have, they're printed for the bride. What I'm saying is, that's not that far off 
And I don't think that's something that you can you can tell me now that won't happen. Mm -hmm. yeah. All right, so I have to embrace new technologies as a person that feels, I feel in, innovative in my own business saying, I will embrace how things go. And I won't try to hold on to the past because that doesn't make it, it doesn't make sense. So uh, whatever whatever direction, I think I think technology will drive us quite yes. a bit. So if it's technology is, is going to drive us, I can't. Uh, be sad for the past. I have to move forward to the future. So I think much further beyond. So I don't think of what's happening now. I think of what's happening five years from now. So, so guys, whoever's listening, to this, <laughs> there's a real opportunity there for somebody who has a unique place in the market to contact David yeah. and mm -hmm. you know maybe test out some some new products and new ways of working. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Is there a type of photography that you've never tried that always quietly thought yes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I did test. I was very, very interested in in fashion photography, and I did test it out a little bit. And I wanted to test it out more, and I still have a desire to test out fashion photography more. Um, I find though that the fashion industry as a whole doesn't seem to turn me on as a as a as a person. Uh, I mean, as my own personality. Um, I'm a, I'm kind of a mountain man, and, and I like to go canoeing, and I, li I like to travel. I mean, and I, I just I don't know. The fashion industry doesn't turn me on very much. Mm -hmm. So I love fashion photography, but I'm not so sure if the fashion industry is right for me. So I have tested it a little bit. I'd love to try a little bit more. I have some concepts of where I could go with it um, in the future. Um, but yeah, I have tested almost all a lot of different kinds of photography. I, I've done many of them. And uh, um, and I think there's so many great things. I used to love to be in aerial photography, just get up in the plane and shoot mm -hmm. from the plane, and you know that was a lot of fun. And, and uh, so I have done a lot of that. But I think fashion is probably probably the direction that I'll I'll keep testing here and there in different ways. But I'm thinking what you know here's the big fashion field in a big circle, and I'll probably come up from the side and do things mm -hmm. my own way on the sides. Mm -hmm. You know, not really get dive deep in. People say, if you're gonna do fashion photography, you gotta to go to the last, you gotta to go to London, Paris, you know, LA, New York, you know, like that. And that no way in hell am I going, <laughs> you know, am I gonna be in any of those cities? Because I have this beautiful 25 acre little lake out in the middle of nowhere. And yeah. uh, you know, and I can say, yeah, very true. If I want to compete in that market, I have to be in that market. Mm -hmm. um, but I can compete in the market from the side. Um, um, but I'm not sure if right now if I really want to. Right now I'm enjoying where I'm at. Mm. I'm, you know. If you want a sample of David's lifestyle, it's your website. <laughs> yeah. The first thing that hits you is the movie that you showed us the other That's day. Great, yeah. And that is just such a, a nice Mary, you've got to look at that one. Uh, that, it's okay. just such a cool yes. movie. And your website address? Uh, just davidbexted.com. Brilliant. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. That's great, guys. So if yeah. anybody wants to go there's, have a, a really good look. Yeah, there's a video in the beginning that shows our lifestyle, who we are, canoeing on my leg, mm -hmm. and then traveling to Bahamas to shoot a wedding, things like that, mm -hmm. just to show uh, who we are as a lifestyle. Because they're not just buying a photographer, they're buying a lifestyle. Yeah. And they need to know yeah. that. Yeah. So. That's what that video was I like for. It's a very clever filter in a way as well. It, it is. It selects the right sort of clients that will work with you, have the same sort of mindset. That's right. Yeah. It was it was designed as a filter, and it was also designed to talk to people that are like minded. Mm -hmm. So it was actually uh, designed to speak to myself. So when I marketed it, it was the marketing was for myself. So I was marketing to me. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. It's a little different yeah. concept, and the video was designed to. Um, almost a reverse. It was. It, it, it sounds weird, but to knock off as many brides as possible mm -hmm. that would not fit uh, with our lifestyle and who we are, um, and so they they wouldn't even call us. Mm -hmm. So then it was reverse marketing a little bit, and then to grab hold of a few of the ones that would just die looking at that video, just love it. Mm -hmm. You know, that's who I really want. You know, that we match. Yeah. And when, when you match, then then it's then you're the wedding's so much fun. Yeah. And for us and for them. Yeah, and you become so much more creative. I That's think, right. That because they let you, they, they, they're more apt to let you be who you are. Yeah. yeah. Right. Just um, with uh, sort of moving on with the social thing, blogs and Facebook, what's your sort of position on that? Do you find very useful? Yeah, well, um, what happened with me is I was doing a blog for a while and I realized Facebook was more social, of course, right? And I like the concept of the Facebook, which is basically a blog in a mm -hmm. lot of ways, right? Mm -hmm. It's a social blog. Mm -hmm. And so I've actually dropped my blog for Facebook because, and then I've really been fine tuning my Facebook. I love it. And not necessarily, um, you know, I guess I am a social person in some ways. Some ways I keep to myself. 
Um, I probably wouldn't be using Facebook as much as I do now if it wasn't for business. Mm -hmm. So it's very it's very business tuned for me, mm -hmm. but I have fun with it um, when I'm using it for business. So uh, um, I find Facebook to be very powerful, very strong. And how often do you interact with Facebook then? Is it every day or once a week? I'm probably interacting somehow or another every day when I can get on the internet. Um, I'm not posting every day. I try to post as much as I can. I'm, I'm, I'm often flying. Um, six months a year I'm gone from my home. Mm -hmm. I'm flying around the world. I love to travel. so. But um, sometimes I just don't have the time, and I don't want to even worry about it. So sometimes I lose a little lead readership, and then I gain them back when I get home because I'm posting every day when I'm usually at home. Yeah. Um, so you know, that's, uh, it's a, it's a great tool. Yeah. Yeah. What's in your opinion um, does it take these days to make your photography business successful? Um. I think it takes the ability, first thing, I, uh, I used to say that your creativity of your imagery and your business should be at a balance, okay, which is, which a lot of photographers, their creativity is high, their business level is lower. Um, but today, I think the market requires you to be a little more business savvy than creative, actually. So, I, and you can be creative in business. And in fact, I have a little, my business card says it's a it's a dog tag and that's all it is a little dog tag and it says google david backstep and that's it all right so i'm trying to think outside the box yeah. right and it's it's a steel business card and i hand them out to people and i'm always trying to think of something outside the box and to be different i think the ability to um to take risks and to um um, to, to see what the market is doing and to flow with the market. I, I used to say, I, I sometimes say that the, uh, the market is kind of like uh, mercury. I mean, it just flows along and you have to figure out where it is and where your place is and how, how to, uh, because it's changing all the time. So you have to be able to embrace change and you have to be able to uh, absorb mistakes in a good manner. Yeah. So mistakes are actually a very powerful way, tool to learn things, mm -hmm. and a lot of people are so afraid of mistakes. Yeah. But the problem is, is you need, But the thing is, you almost really need to make a lot of mistakes. Mm -hmm. So if you're not making mistakes, you're not pushing hard enough. Mm -hmm. So you and, and the thing is, you can't really ride a wave. The wave will crash you. You're just gonna. You, so in this business, we need to learn how to ride the wave in, in a unique manner. So that the board has to be different, and you have to you have to cut the wave a different way, and you have to try it. And every wave is going to be a little different. If you think you're going to get into this business and then find a wave and then ride it forever, it's not going to work. It's, not, it's just going to crash you down anyway. So uh, you need to be able to be embrace this change that's happening, and the change is happening faster and faster and faster. Um, so if you don't appreciate that. Then yeah, just go back and get a normal job yeah. because it just, it's not it's going to drive you crazy. Yeah. And you have to have a good attitude about everything yeah. because it's just a, a, a negative attitude just doesn't help you in this business at all. Nothing at all. And you have to stay constantly motivated. To motivated, to push right. yourself, don't you? Which brings you back to workshops. If you yeah. if you really don't feel like you're motivated enough and your your motivation has really gone down, then a workshop will really bring you back up mm -hmm. to a to a higher level of motivation. How do you feel about networking with um, peers and, and people who are just coming up through the ranks as well? Um, I network mainly through Facebook. If it's an easy to, net, to, met, uh, to network, then I will do it that way. If it's harder networking, I'm not that great at it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wish I was better. Um, I guess maybe I should take a networking class. <laughs> 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 uh, I, I, you know, it's, it's, really, to tell you the truth, is... Uh, um, um, you know, I enjoy my home and where I live, and I enjoy to travel, but I do need to network better. And uh, so we all have different things we're learning and trying to make better. So I've been in this business 15 years. i got so much to learn. Um, and, uh, but um, I do believe networking is very powerful. And so you, you, it just the opportunities happen. That's why I think Facebook helps me a lot because just opportunities, bang. Someone says, they chat with me and they say, uh, uh, can you come to Brazil? And next thing you know, I'm in Brazil. So that you know, that I love those little things that happen like that. So, yeah. It's opportunity, isn't that? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Like That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they don't just happen. Uh, you have to kind of throw your imagery out there, throw yourself out there. You know, jump in the mix. Mm -hmm. You know, standing back and just waiting for something to happen. This doesn't work. No. So, yeah. Have you had any funny experiences? Anything that stands out? 
in your mind from uh, shoots you've done in the past? Oh, you know, I have to think about it for a minute, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I always, I always seem, I have so much fun, you know, I mean, and doing whatever I do, it's all, it, I just enjoyable. I mean, I haven't really burnt out after 15 years. In fact, I feel like I'm, I, I just keep building in, in the enjoyment level of mm-hmm. this business and really loving what's happening. So uh, I can't think of anything now, but if I do, no, I'll bring it up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is there anything you wouldn't face a car? It's, it's interesting, and this just came up recently. This came up here at this war- workshop. Mm-hmm. Someone said, I would love it if you would photograph the two of us with the, with the beautiful background of the, uh, of the sun going down and a and, and flash, and, and, the kind of, and they asked me to do that. And I said, actually, just so you know, um, you know that wouldn't be my vision. If you really want my vision, and you, which is what they wanted, mm-hmm. if you really want my vision, then come in the afternoon and let's go out in some harsh light and let me show you what I'll, and I'll shoot you one. I'll take one cool shot of you in the harsh light mm-hmm. and, they, and, and, some, and maybe some shadows on the wall. My style. Yeah. So, yeah. so I actually refused to do it. Yeah. And I said, I said, you just need to know um, if, you want, if you want something for me like that and if I have the time, then I want to do it my style. You know what I mean? So I don't, uh, um, so like portraits are no longer my style, uh, shooting children are no longer my style, um, um, boudoir is not my style, uh, babies are not my style, I mean weddings is my style, mm-hmm. that's what I want to do. So I refuse everything else. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now I do. Uh, commercial work, rarely do any commercial work, I don't, I don't do much of anything. I want to specialize in the thing that I love to do. Yeah. So I do refuse actually more than you'd expect. Yes. You know? yeah, yeah. Yeah. We actually find that in the UK at the mm-hmm. moment, because of the market, mm-hmm. uh, a, a large number of uh, photographers are diversifying into different styles of photography. In fact, we do different styles of photography ourselves, yeah. but we're also finding that a lot of photographers are um, now introducing workshops into their own programme mm-hmm. of service offering. How do you feel about that with more and more photographers coming into the marketplace doing that? Um, I, I know what's going on and I can't dwell on it. And it's not something that I really worry about. Um, in fact, I had one person uh, take all the images they got at my workshop and, and put it on a website. And that was the only images they had at my workshop. And they created a workshop to do workshop. You know what I mean? So, you know, I mean, they created a, web, a website to do workshop. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, I, I didn't even... I, I just, someone told me about it. I took a look at it, and I, and I had a little giggle. And I thought, if if the I, I I feel sad for the students. I hope the students do a little bit of research. That's really important. Um, I think a lot of students will just grab somebody because they they seem hot, they seem cool. And I, I want them right. But I don't think people should choose their workshops that way. I think they should find out who these people are that are putting on workshops. Do they have the qualifications? I mean, have they been in business for a while? Uh, um, are they selling something that would really help me, or am I just going there to because they're they're trendy? Mm-hmm. So be careful about who you choose. Mm-hmm. All right, and like I said, I can't spend a lot of time dwelling on anything that seems negative in that mm-hmm. in, in our field because mm-hmm. uh, um, because it would drive me crazy. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. Yeah. So I would like. All right. You know. All right. Yeah. There might be somebody just around here, around the corner, doing exactly what I they 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 saw what I'm doing on my website. And they've, they've created a style almost exactly and really fine-tune all their images so they look exactly like mine. And I can't do anything about that. And I'm not worried about it. It's like, you know, if that's how you, um, I have to say, if that's how you want to run your business, you'll probably find that you'll fail. Mm-hmm. Because it really the style comes from within, not from without. I don't grab the style from you and take it to me and then make it successful. It rarely happens that way. It, it, you just find that, that it doesn't work that way. You have to get it from here, from inside. And uh, make your style that way. So, yeah. So, what's your feeling, David, on um, associations like the MPA, WPPI? Do you think the benefit for professionals to join is is it, is it a necessity to join one, or is it just a sort of a, a, an addition to your uh, nice badge you can put yeah. on the website? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or, yeah, yeah. Um, I really feel that organizations are really good to join and be active in them because you, you're talking about, you're talking about um, networking and you're talking about being amongst people. If you stay in little islands on your own, then, then um, uh, I find today's day and age the best way to do it is find like-minded people that seem to be like you and create model shoots and hang out together and drink some beer and talk about photography. You rise each other up in, in the level of photography. If you fight everybody, 
then 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 you're putting these walls up, and you don't learn anything from anybody. And you then you so so one of my biggest mistakes I've ever made was when I first started was I didn't apprentice with anybody, and I didn't join any organizations in the beginning, and so I was fighting all this knowledge. So I had to make huge amount of mistakes mm -hmm. to learn anything. If I would have joined organizations in the very early part of my career, then I, I would have I would have learned from other people's mistakes. And because many photographers will tell you what mistake they made. And uh, and, and there's lots of workshops that'll say, I made this mistake. Well I'll learn I'll learn from that mistake. So I was telling people here that I made so many mistakes. Let me help you not make some mistakes. So uh, you know it, it would have helped a lot. So then later on in my life, I started joining all the organizations, saying, you know, many organizations saying, hey, um, um, and, and learn from these different people. So I think, yeah, they're very powerful. Yeah, and I think photographers tend to open up more to each other when they're members of an association. Yeah. And well, I've found that. Yeah. But they will say things that have gone wrong at weddings or yes. like this happens. And it's, it's a massive learning curve. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a lesson learned. Yes. Yeah. Hopefully you will, yes. you will learn from that going forward, won't you? you know, yeah. Sharing those experiences. I think today, today's day and age, people that close up um, and try to try to hold everything to themselves and don't get involved in 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 other people, uh, then and other photographers, uh, then they're they're really they're setting themselves up for failure a lot faster. Yes. All right. So that's why Facebook is so powerful because you're opening, you're saying, okay, here am I, here I am, and uh, oh, I've made amazing friends from all over the world. I mean, every niche and corner. Um, um, what one recently from. Um, uh, oh, it was right on the coast of South America, a uh, very, very small country on the coast of South America. Then another, another one from uh, so far away. I just went to Lithuania recently and had a little workshop with somebody I met there and stayed at their home, the photographer, and had a great time in Lithuania. I've never been there. Lithuania, little country. There. <laughs> but there, there was really cool people, so I love to be opened up to the world. So, yeah. I think it's good to broaden your horizons like that, and obviously it satisfies your. Um, you know, desire for more travel as well, doesn't yes, it? Yeah. Yes, yes. Um, so where do you think we're going to be at, say, in five years' time, wedding photography? Big question, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The technology is advancing. Sure, right? sure. Well, the, the description I, I gave you of the video and video going to the cloud and things happen instantaneously, I think that fits. I really don't, uh, I really see that um, imaging is going to change. And then, and I think that um, only the people that can embrace that change will be will be successful. So you have to decide where and see where it goes. Now, I did think that video was going to come in faster, and I think it's maybe some of the equipment hasn't really caught up, hasn't really moved on quick fast enough. But um, I have noticed at WPPI, you go to you go to the trade show, a lot more video is there than it used to be. Um, so a lot of things are are happening, right? So um, in the future. Um, I think that uh, the people that can embrace change quicker will be the ones that will make, they'll do well. And, uh, and, and, and I, I totally believe the people that are have more positive ed, ed, energy and positive change and positive idea of where things are going. The people that, are, that, that have a hold on to a negative feel of how things are, have, are, are going now are the people that will finally drive, drive themselves crazy mm -hmm. and get out. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because they, they, they just can't. Um, embrace what's happening. You know what I mean? So, uh, um, I, I guess I, I came from the film days, okay? Uh, but, I, but I've left that all behind. Yeah. You know, there, there's new things happening now. I don't, I don't hold on to the film days and say, well, the glory days back yeah. then. You know, it's like, well, that wasn't totally true because there was problems then too. Yeah. If you, if you, really, yeah. Yeah. you know, film was all sorts of problems to it. Yes. You know, I mean, uh, they used to mess my film up all the time. So, you know, cut it wrong, do this wrong, a loose film in, in, in shipping, all sorts of crazy things have happened to me there. Yeah. So um, there was never a perfect time. You know, it's, 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 you always have to uh, go with the flow. It's what's happening, yeah. How important is lighting to you with the style of photography that you're currently doing? And how do you see your style of photography changing maybe in the next uh, 12 um, months, two years? Yeah, yeah. Um, I love lighting and I love to see light and I love to chase light. And um, I see myself using light in a much more dramatic concepts than I did before. Um, maybe even a little bit darker ways of using light that, that is different than I, what I've done in the past. Um, 
making um, uh, different types of moods, using mood more with my lighting than I did before. Um, and it, and actually breaking a lot of funky rules that have been around for a long time. Rules like, uh, you know, um, you should never, you should always fill in the light around the eyes, you know, uh, in, in the daytime. But then I saw uh, Kate Blanchett on the front cover of w, w Magazine, and it really showed the drama of this lady, and she had raccoon eyes, we call it raccoon eyes, mm -hmm. you know, the darkness in the eyes. Uh, but it, it fit her perfectly. Yeah. So you can break rules if you break them um, in your own stylistic manner, and you uh, and you believe in those rules that were being broken, and you believe in what you did, not breaking rules just because you're breaking them, but to break them for a purpose, for your own purpose. Mm -hmm. And I think that you can end up doing some pretty amazing things that way. So uh, I see my I see my style evolving all the time, and uh, there's a you know a trunk of a style of tree in the tree that I see that my main style is a trunk. And there's a lot of branches coming off, and I'm always experimenting with different concepts with these branches. My trunk seems to sway a little, but it seems to stay um, stylistically similar um, with all the branches that I, I'm uh, testing and trying. And then the trunk sways a little to the right, and then the trunk sways a little to the left. So, you know, but my style seems to stay relatively similar. Uh, but then that's what I'm known for, mm -hmm. which yeah. is cool. Yeah. But important also just have a peek through those little doors. That's just right. To see to the the like, yeah. Go off not to be yeah. stuck yeah. compositionally and not to not to stay on the same level all the time. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So our guys in the UK um, want to understand how to master a style that you would sell to high end clients. What would be your words of advice? Um, I think that they just need to look into themselves. And stop. Stop really trying to gather styles from other places and find out what you love to do. If you love um, to be more photojournalistic, then be the best photojournalistic uh, person in your area or in, in your country. I mean, just have grand ideas of where you want to go uh, with the style. Uh, think about your imagery and look at it in thumbnail size and see where you're going compositionally and, uh, and find out um, uh, what images draw you. I had, a, I had a shot in Scotland where um, I had two shoes that I placed down to take a detail, but then I let the light pass through the shoes and it created huge shadows on the on going through me. And then I used a wide angle to connect those shoes and those lines over to the bride who was getting her wake up on. So the, that image, like wow, that wowed me, right? It wowed me because I did it, and, I was, and, and, and wowed me because I, I thought a little bit further and I thought I love that shot. So those are that's those are like where you mine your style from. The ones you like the best. I love that. I want to do it again. I love that. I want to do it again. I love that. I want to do it again. So you mine this. And the problem, the thing is, though, I don't think you mine style. You mine your style from images that you think everybody else loves. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so the bride's gonna love this. The bride's gonna love that. The bride. If you if you keep thinking about what the bride's gonna love, then you're only pleasing them, and you're not really pleasing yourself. I find that if you please yourself more. Um, when it comes to compositions and the way you like to shoot, then you actually create a higher class of imagery than because you're pressing the shutter for yourself, yeah. then pressing the shutter always for them. Yeah. And you can do that. You can do it. You can balance it. I, I just, it just balance it by education. Yeah. Uh, I was in the UK and they told, me, they told me when I was teaching there one time and they said, but David, our UK brides will never see each other before the wedding. And I said, but I want to tell you that I've shot seven weddings in the UK. And five of them saw saw each other before the wedding because I passionately sold the idea, and they couldn't believe it. Mm -hmm. And I said, "Yeah, I've been in your country, and I've and five of your brides." Yeah, you know, so it's, it's a tricky thing. The first look concept. Yeah, um, right. it, 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 it's against all tradition in the UK and right. Catholic weddings. No, it's a big sure, no, sure, no. Sure, sure, sure. But actually, we've we've shot a few mm -hmm. uh, first mm -hmm. looks, and it is all about selling that passion. Isn't it is. It? That's right. Yeah, selling your passion. Yeah. If you want something and you sell it hard enough, people will buy into it. Yeah. Certain people do. Yeah. So. So after this week, David, where are you off to next? I'm, I'm going watching. home now. I'm oh, going yeah, 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 to yeah. go home yeah. for a relax and hang out at home. And we've been traveling for almost a month now. Yeah. Yeah. And so now it's time to go home, hang out for a little while. And then I'm off to um, Spain and then Italy. So, uh, and, and then after that, um, I can, I'm kind of mellowing out for until, the, until uh, January. 
and which, you know, mellowing out for me doesn't mean anything. It means go home in the office and start doing a book that I need to do and this I need to do and develop a product and do this and do that, get some more weddings and all these kind of things, you know. Yeah. So, um, but, uh, uh, and then January, it picks up again for me. I go to WPPI, let's say I go to PPA and imaging. And uh, so this will be the first year for a little while that I didn't go to SWPP. I'm going to go to imaging uh, in New Orleans and then uh, um, in WPPI and Brazil. And I mean, it's all getting in line. Yes. So next year's looking great. Yes. I'm very excited. A hectic schedule. Yeah, always. Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. How, do, how does your wife, for all the partners out there who, you know, are sort of there on the periphery and wondering, yeah. how does she manage? Because you have a gorgeous daughter, Asia, yeah. and so cute. Um, how do you manage with all the travel with the family? Well, they stay home sometimes when they feel like it. Mm -hmm. And when she just, and then they come with me when they want to. So when they're really excited about coming, then they come along and we pay for the tickets, it's no problem, and we, they come. Um, if she just kind of in the mood to met the nest and hang out home, then she's staying, and she's happy to do that. And we, we, have, um, we have developed this in, for years and years. We've almost been married 20 years. And so we've developed this idea that it's no problem being apart. And, and not that we look forward to it, it's just that when we are apart, it's, it's not a problem. We don't, we don't spend too much time dwelling on the idea that we miss each other. It's just, I have a job, she has jobs, we all work, we all work really well together. So, um, um, it works well. Asia, had, Asia, my daughter, who is four and a half years, has been to 16 countries. Wow. Okay, so she comes with me a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and I've been to 75 countries. It's nuts. It's, it's, it's a crazy passion. <laughs> it's a crazy passion. So... It's a great passion. And let's hope soon yeah. you'll be dropping in the UK again. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. David, it's been an absolute okay. pleasure. All right. Thank you cool. ever so much. All right. Cool. Cool. Ashley, for playing all files. Catch you again soon. Fantastic.